Hi, good morning. It's Mark Owen from Moose Marketing and PR and the editor of Punchline Magazine. Welcome to Punchline Talks. Um, today, we've got a fantastic panel of business experts to talk about their business sector, the business news in the local area, and also what's caught their eye in this week's Punchline. So let me introduce you to the panel. We've got Simon Ford, the Managing Director of All Stones and Speedy Skips, Ian Egerton, uh, Director of uh, Planning Consultants of Evans Jones, and Simon Tottill, Property and Development Director from Robert Hitchens. Welcome to Punchline Talks, guys. Right, uh, let's start with you, Simon. Fordy, what were you uh, got in the papers you picked out, please? Um, well, going on the theme of green credentials, um, I picked up in the Times uh, today um, that Colonel Gaddafi's super yacht um, is having a makeover um, and it is going to become uh, the most green energy yacht um, on the market. It's going to be powered by hydrogen um, and they've got other different things in the yacht that makes it um, very economic um, to run and uh, and uh, to have a go in. Um, the other one I, I sort of picked up on as well, on the same sort of theme really, which was a bit more interesting than that, was on, I've been to Seville and we got a, a quite an embarrassing story to tell about that. Um, we went there and drove down and we tried to pick some oranges off the trees because we thought they were normal oranges um, until we tasted them um, and whatnot. Anyway, um, Seville oranges, they are picking all the oranges off the trees. This is in the Times as well. Nice. And they are making electricity from them. Wow. So they are pulping them and creating a gas and then uh, making electricity um, from all the oranges that they pick off the trees in Seville. I mean, it's amazing that the, the, did you hear about the eco park that they're creating on the other side of Gloucester Tip? Did you see that yeah. punchline? That's, I think that's what they're trying to do over there. Yeah. I mean, as again, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the detail as to what they're trying to um, actually uh, do there. Um, I know they're planting a load of trees and some other things, but. Um, well, it should, they said wind, a wind farm, um, uh, hydrogen, plants um oh, yeah all sorts of different things there I, I think it's really exciting and they we've got to do something with all this plastic obviously you run all stones and speed and skips um how's how's it actually been for you on that front it must have been really really busy yeah i mean it's continued i mean we're we're continually evolving very quickly i've, I've never seen so much change in our business in such a short period of time um, and what I mean by change is uh, different methods, different procedures, different ways of handling waste streams and, and what we do with it, um, different plastics. And we're, we're now taking all our construction film that comes through our transfer stations and sending it to Turkey. And it's being uh, made into black bin liners and sent back to us. So we can bespoke certain people's waste and then give them their waste back in a different format, a complete circular economy. Um, and that's moving really, really quickly. Um, so we, we are evolving and we're having to train people differently. We're having to put new uh, CRM systems in. Um, we're a lot of technology um, and we're having to move with the times very, very quickly. Um, and on top of that, it is relentless the demand because you you've got a lot of people still on furlough being paid 80 percent they can't go to the shops they can't go on holiday you know so they're still spending it on their properties on their gardens uh, and on everything else so so the demand is literally relentless to give you a clue our online sales this morning for bulk bags so bulk bag of topsoil or type one or something like that 96 bags were sold that have got to be delivered today now we've already got you know 80 odd bags to go out today so we're, we're finding it very difficult to keep up with demand just through sheer numbers you know of people with trucks and you know how do you you know and we're trying to push this out to next monday or tuesday or whatnot but um it's very difficult We've, we've had some supply chain issues, um, especially from our European suppliers. 
um, and we've had some material shortages, um, which we we've, we've had to find other sources for. Um, and, and you know, it's not big problems; they're all good problems, really. You know, because we are so busy, and you know, I feel for the people that uh, have been put out of business for this period. You know, hotels and hairdressers and all such like. Um, you know, because you know they haven't got any work. You know, and what do they do? You know, and they're having to retrain or go and work somewhere else or or anything like. We we've, we've got jobs. If anybody's interested, we've got jobs. You know, going. You, um, you, your your skips must be rammed as well you know obviously that's a big part of your business um how's that been we've got over five thousand skips and we haven't got any four yarders six yarders or eight yarders currently available we've got orders for another 500 skips being manufactured by three different manufacturers um but we're running out of product we we've run out of skips you know and, and i've never had it in my life like this but i but i know you know this is short-lived once the furlough scheme ends and the reality of you know people probably making people redundant even more uh, is gonna hit hard you know so I, I know it sounds bad you know that you've got to make hay while the sun shines um but we've also got a plan for the future and maybe some shrinkage in different areas of the business do you um, think that a lot of the, the thing is people are skipping stuff that perhaps they would have car booted or, you know, the charity shops aren't open? Are you seeing a lot of that or is it just a lot of garden waste? Or is it building waste? Yeah, we've we've seen all of that. I mean, one thing that we did do, uh, you know, as part of our online presence, if you like, of our, our online strategy, um, is that we've started to find unusual objects that are coming through the waste and then we post it on Facebook to say, look what we found in the skip. We had a bobsleigh come in the skip last week. <laughs> a bobsleigh. I mean, who the hell uses a bobsleigh in Boston? Yeah. You know, but you're, you're finding all sorts of things. Um, you know, we've, we've had uh, rocking horses and, uh, you know, loads of kids games and, and things. It, it's quite interesting just to see. So the lads are quite looking forward to rummaging through and picking some really unusual objects out. Um, not from Ann Summers or anything like that, but you know, it's um, <laughs> it's quite it's quite good. It's quite fun actually. But, um, I, but I, don't, I don't see you got that in there. Well, let's have a let's have a get, let's uh, get the other guys talking about the papers and we come back to their business. Thanks so much, Ian. Let's uh, let's uh, let's go for your papers. What have you picked out first, please? Hi, Mark. Um, so I'll start with a serious one. So this is um, this is an article from the Times right. talking about how many people are going back to work. So the ONS have done a study in that 50% of people are back to work, apparently, which uh, I think is good news. Um, we've, we did a piece last year talking about um, the future of the office and, uh, and home working. And I think at the time, there was some survey information out that something like 75% of people wanted to work from home twice a week. My, my feeling is that, that there's been a reversal of that, and most people I speak to have had enough of seeing at home, as I am now. Um, and can't really wait to get back to the office. So, um, you know, there are stories, HSBC are cutting their office space. And I think Goldman Sachs on the other on the other side have said, everyone's everyone's got to come back to work. We've had enough of home work and it's no good. Um, and I, our, our personal take on it, I mean, the, the graduates in the office, I think it must be a struggle for them um, in terms of bringing young people on. Um, you know, human nature is if, if you've got someone on the other end of a phone, it's just that that barrier to picking it up and you know dealing with them, and they don't pick up on what's going on in the office. You want to learn by osmosis if you're sat in an office with senior people around you. Um, but without that, I do fear for them. So I I do think most people are going to be back in the office. Um, but I do think I do think more people will work from home. I mean, before this, there was something like um, uh, only five percent of people work from home full time. Um, that's probably going to go up. I'd say. Um, but I, I think it's, it's going to be more around, you know, maybe, maybe someone didn't work from home at all. Um, they've got used to working from home, saving the commutes. I mean, for me, I'm five minutes from my office, so it makes no difference to me really. Um, but if you're commuting an hour and a half into work every day, then I could see the attraction, maybe working at home a couple of days a week. Um, so from a business point of view, 
I can see there's an opportunity, particularly for larger larger businesses, to reduce their office space. And our, our take on that back in September last year was around around a third, maybe slightly less now. Um, and clearly, you know, you've got the benefit for employees; they're not commuting. Got to, you know, work life balance is better. Businesses can save money. But I think also businesses need to look at their office space and make them a bit more like home. We've certainly had feedback from from staff saying you know, they quite like working from home. It's a bit more relaxed, a bit more casual, a bit less clinical. So I think the days of the um, walking into an open plan office space with rows and rows of desks is probably probably on the wane. So more of a sort of you're always going to have some desks, but maybe some more of a, like a cafe style area. That's I mean, uh, you can't make them um, put them um, some beds in the office where they can sit on the end of the <laughs> Or well, I, uh, part of a kitchen unit or, you know, a, a sofa that you can balance on the side where a dog is running around and you've got a three-year-old kid. What you, get up to, what you get up to in your office, Mark, is, uh, is pro probably not for this <laughs> But um, you, you joke, but I do, know, um, I do know a couple of corporate lawyers in, in, uh, in London and um, certainly the American firms at one point had beds in the office. So if they're working on a deal overnight, they had they a room full of beds where people would go and sleep for a couple of hours and then go back to the deal. But... Um, no, I just think uh, it's going to be a bit more casual. So you'll have those people who are maybe only in once or twice a week, they'll come in, set up on a table, grab a coffee, have a couple of meetings, and then maybe they'll be happy with just working on the laptop for an hour or two before they go home, rather than having their own their own desk space. Clearly, COVID is a challenge at the moment. Given, you know, so we've gone from hot desking to everyone having their own desk because then it's their own space, they can keep it clean. But I think you know, it, will, it will go full circle. Um, but as a, as a, obviously as a planner and looking, looking ahead, you know, you've got the forum in Gloucester. It's a, supposed to be 120,000 square feet of office space and yeah. retail. Uh, you've got Ecclesiastical that is now empty. They've moved over into uh, Brockworth Industrial Park. Um, yeah. do, do, do you see that, that, that they'll be able to fill that space? Do you think that many people will come back to the office, even if it's part-time? Well, I think there'll be a mixture, won't there? There's... Um... I think that you'll see more shared uh, office space coming online. But I say, so even as a you know we're a relatively small business, we we certainly looked at that back in um, you know the early part of last year. But I think it, it is more expensive per head. So I think there is a point where you, you know you it, it just makes no sense to rent a rent a desk in a shared space because mm. it doesn't actually save you any money. So why not have your own office? Um, so I think people will always want offices, but it's certainly going to be a challenge to those um, those landlords of large open plan office spaces. They're probably going to have to be more flexible. So rather than having one tenant occupying four floors, I don't know, please ask for about four or five floors. Yeah, two or three, I think, yeah. Maybe maybe one tenant occupying the whole building. Lovely for the landlord. Sat there, 10-year lease. Don't have to worry about that. They look after the whole building. Probably have to be a bit more flexible and carve that up. So they have maybe one tenant per floor. Um, Clearly, that brings complications. Landlords probably going to have to look after the repairs of the building, but then it de-risks it as well because you've got four tenants. Maybe, maybe you'll even better charge those tenants a little bit more rent. Um, so it swings around about. But uh, I know I know Simon's smiling slightly because uh, you know, be careful. I have a landlord in the room. <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking more of the institutional investors, Simon. I, thought you could, I was waiting for you to backtrack some of the life and do like that. So, you know, our pension funds. So everyone, everyone's getting stuck into landlords. But what they don't realise is a lot of those landlords are our pension funds as well. So um, and the, the pension funds, I think, will take a long time to turn around. So, you know, this big juggernaut cruise liner. I think they'll take a long time to turn around to the market, but they're going to have to respond. I guess, you know, particularly in retail, um, you know, we've got, uh, we've got challenges in Cheltenham where there are a number of institutional investors with big lumps of retail property which you I'm afraid will probably um, be left with vacant properties in the near future. Because let's be honest, Cheltenham is looking very tired. Gloucester is looking like, well, I've never seen it look so bad. I'll, I'll be honest with you, which is really, really sad. You walk from Eastgate Street to Westgate Street. And I think the big problem that we're going to have is when people aren't on furlough or when people come back into the city, I think there's going to be a rude awakening that actually there a lot of the, the retail, a lot of the, the hairdressers, a lot of the cafes won't be there anymore. They would have gone, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, we've been talking about the future of High Street for a while. And um, I think this has accelerated a trend which was already there, I'm afraid. 
I was in Gloucester myself on um, on Tuesday, yeah, and um, being a Gloucester boy, it's quite depressing walking around Gloucester City Centre at the moment. The number of vacant units, but I think it, it needs to change. Um, there needs to be another reason to come to town other than shopping. Um, so I think you will see different uses coming into town. Um, maybe maybe the days of the the bigger retailers with huge stalls are numbered. Um, and I know it's certainly from my, my other half's point of view, if if that resulted in more independents selling something a bit different, she, she'd certainly like that. Um, but I think you'll see more leisure uses, maybe some care uses coming into the centre of town as well. Um, clearly, set, town centres generally have good transport links. So putting everything in the centre of town, so maybe you, you know you come into town for a, see your doctor, small medical procedure. Um, we've seen, you know, uh, not, not one for me, but minor cosmetic surgery uh, uh, procedures seem to be on the, on the rise. So you come in, I don't know, come in, get a tan, get some Botox, see your doctor, have a drink and then maybe do a bit of shopping. But I think the, the days, of, um, days of high streets being all about shopping um, are probably um, nearing an end. Okay, well, that's, that's uh, food for thought, Ian. Thanks ever so much. I took to uh, Simon. Hi, Simon. Thanks for joining Punchline mm -hmm. Sports today. Obviously, you're a landlord, Robert Hitchens. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, about Robert Hitchens, please, Simon? Well, we're one of those dreadful landlords, aren't we? <laughs> no, no. Robert Hitchens is basically a property company which has been going for over 50 years, um, set up by Robert himself um, very successfully. Um, uh, were in the residential development market, incredibly successful regional house builder. But principally now we, we invest in, in land and promote land for uh, development. But also uh, my role is looking after um, the commercial property development arm and also um, the existing um, property portfolio, which is income producing. And that's really from Tewkesbury in the north to Bristol in the south and from South Wales across to Oxford. And it's about a million square feet as we sit here now. Um, we are a family owned firm and have been all the way through. Um, we have very much, a, um, we are Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire based and always will be. Um, and uh, we're very, very proud to be so in working with our existing tenants and also new occupiers in terms of trying to bring investment into the region. Um, we see our relationship with our tenants very much as a partnership. And that, to be honest, we've, we've been very, very fortunate with the tenants we've got. But throughout the pandemic, our, our rent roll has been exceedingly positive in, ter in terms of the levels you'd normally expect, you know, in terms of signing up a lease with somebody, a rent is due, due to be paid. Um, and, and the occupiers have worked alongside us and we've worked with them, et cetera, to make sure that when they've had difficulties through this period, we've, we've been there to listen and see whether we can help. So, so it's worked very, very well. Is that because you guys are more, you know, not being funny, business park, trading estates, rather than a high street based, you know, so a lot of those have carried on trading. Let's be honest about it. It seems to be the hospitality and the pub trade, the wedding trade, um, you know, retail. They've all been shut really sadly, but the others, they're all being traded. They're all making yeah, money still. And the, the predominant you know, in terms of um, uh, the size of the portfolio and what, what we've got, there's no doubt about it, business space, which is effectively industrial distribution and offices, uh, makes up the majority of our portfolio as we sit here at the moment. We've got very limited exposure to, uh, to, to retail. The retail we've got is principally to the, to the likes of, you know, food stores and, 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 and the like, which have been able to continue to trade and traded well. The office sector effectively has been in deep freeze um, since March last year there hasn't really we've not seen a noticeable collapse in terms of the occupiers we're dealing with um but there's also been no real movement um so no real activity so it's, it's, it's held in abeyance the distribution and industrial market has been absolutely screaming um you know, in terms of the um in, in increase in terms of internet traffic a uh, significant amount of demand um from distribution and also retailers moving their, their business model online. And that continues to go on. They're also flavor of the month, month when it comes to investment from institutions and, and the yields are being driven ever um, lower uh, and value ever higher accordingly because of it. High Street, High Street is always a difficult one. And I'm a great believer that, that there's, that there's all, always um, a lot of emotion 
when it comes to the high street and retail. And retail consists of many factors. It's not just high street. It's not just out of town. It's not just online. It's all of it. And it's a mix. And there's no doubt about it at the moment. High street retail, there's too much. Um, so you have to re-engage and, and look at what you can provide there. But also people like experience. So if, you, if you're, you're sat at your terminal at the moment, you want to buy something, you can buy it anywhere in the world but you don't necessarily get the real experience, but it's convenience. Mm -hmm. And that's the way retail's got to go in terms of physical retail. It's about having activities, having mix, having entertainment, having nice places, having public realm, etc. And added to that, if you're going to really go to town in terms of trying to assist um, town centres get independent retailers, and it wasn't so long ago that everybody was shouting and screaming that every high street was the same, and it's claim town with all the same multiple retailers. Now, those multiple retailers in the main have gone, but the problem is business rates. Mm -hmm. And the taxation on retailers coming into town centres means to say that the independents can't afford to do it. If you could do something about that, I think there'll be a plethora of independent retailers coming into different high streets. People would enjoy the, the feel, the comfort, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, human beings like meeting other human beings. So, so I think that there's an answer, but it's got to be a joined up approach. It's not just a saying, the saying retail and town centres is dead or we've got, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It needs to be worked up in terms of taxation, uh, public realm, governance, and then also how you promote yourselves. And a lot of people don't realise, but obviously you guys are behind the designer outlet, the Cotswold Designer Outlet near Tewkesbury. Um, you've done the, the new Costa, Costa Coffee on Stonehouse. I, I wrote down a whole different thing here. Uh, Kingsway Park, you do the, the new Lidl and B&M stores. You've got the new school in Great, in Great Albury. You've got the Midlands group in Tewkesbury. Sorry, uh, in Tewkesbury. You've got Innsworth Park, 72 hectares, 1,300 homes, four acre office space, 3.7 acres of business park, Stroud Park, there's Bonds Mill. You, you guys really, really are all over the motorway as well, Junction. No, uh, junction 13 10 and 9 i mean it's 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 quite a huge operation you guys uh, uh, work with and um, and i think actually kind of the backbone of the development of what's happening in, in gloucestershire at the moment well gloucestershire has yeah, to be totally honest i'm sitting in somerset at the moment i live in somerset but i come up to to, to boddington and um, uh, to work, et cetera, and, and nice offices up there, et cetera. But since I've been uh, working up in Gloucestershire and I have done quite a lot of transactions over many years up there, it's only when you're there, you realize how fa fantastic the business space is and also the intellect within the area. If you look at the range of skills you've got there in terms of the nuclear, the, 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 elect uh, the engineering, the aircraft, et cetera, et cetera, there's a huge cyber, huge plethora of different types of businesses. I think, I think it's all about having the availability of the land to work with an occupier to design and build what they really require. Because the biggest problem we've got at the moment is the availability of employment land. Because you've got a large number of businesses which are succeeding internationally, but they're finding it very, very difficult to expand because of the restrictions that planning is placing upon us, green belt, area of outstanding natural beauty, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a real problem. Now, in terms of where we're operating, there a lot of those are historic sites and we've worked through, et cetera, uh, and they, they're in the right location. And it's all about location and it's all about linking Gloucestershire down the Severn Estuary because from Bristol to Gloucestershire, as I say, the, 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 the array of talent and the array of fantastic companies there are, you know, there's a, there's a lot more to do, but we can only go as fast as we can in terms of the availability of space. So you're right, we are very busy, um, it's strike difficult times, you know, business, I'm not, make no bones about it. It's a very, very tough times in lockdown for the majority of companies at the moment. And, and I think it's about being empathetic and also looking forward, hopefully this roadmap to actually be achieved on the dates the government has set out because people are now starting to look forward. Well, I, 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 I we've at punchline here. We keep obviously a very close eye on your developments and uh, try and champion them as well. And, uh, and um, yeah, some exciting stuff happening. Really, really is. Um, let's go to your stories. Have you picked out a newspaper? I forgot to ask you. I'm very sorry, Simon. Uh, what, what... Well, doing, Ian nicked mine anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, but I, I'm just trying to find a reserve now. So uh, I suppose being, you know, again, on the serious note in the Telegraph um, and also the Times, it talks about the, the bank 
to run um, the economy hot. Um, cool. Basically, what that's saying at the moment is, you know, alongside what Ian said, the, the Office of National Statistics was talking over 50% are returning to the office last week and 30% were at home and there's, there's starting to be that shift, etc. What we're seeing is, is that people are have been retaining quite a lot of their income where possible. I know people, there's different ranges of people and you've got to be very sensitive to that, but there seems to be quite a lot of public, uh, private spend out there. And there's also the feeling of being restricted for quite a long period of time. But we, we foresee that there's going to be quite a bounce back. Uh, and I think government and most people acknowledge that hopefully when these rules are lifted, you're going to start to see a surge back of activity. Not all businesses will unfortunately have made it and there will be voids coming, et cetera, et cetera. But those which are OK and have managed to see it, the, the view is basically that there's going to be quite a push of activity and quite a lot of expenditure going on. The bank yesterday decided to, to hold interest rates where they are, which are obviously historically low. And I think the view is basically they're going to, it's exactly the same with furlough, extending furlough. They're going to extend those further in to make sure they see tangible activity and growth coming forward. So my, there's a bit of a worry from my pers perspective. I think it's the right thing to do. We've got to engender the recovery. and this, But you've got to be very careful about the inflationary factors which are, are potentially going to come. Uh, and, I, and I think Simon, with his, his business, is a classic example that you know, if you've got all this demand and you haven't got the supply, the pressure is going to be on the prices. Uh, and I think with what we've had with our supply chain and also potential Brexit difficulties, you could see inflation now starting to become very real within a fairly short period of time when we start. So, so there's, a, there's a bit of confidence coming back and the government, I think, is doing the right thing in terms of trying to let it go and, and, and open up and see what happens in growth. But then it's a case of what happens next. And we've just got to be careful that we don't all, well, all get carried away. It's an easier thing, isn't it? But, but uh, it's, it's just being mindful to the fact that when inflation rears its head, where are we going in terms of interest rates? Well, interest rates would actually, let's be honest, kill the government, wouldn't it? Okay, let's talk about Punchline itself. Okay, so story, let's go to you, Simon. Forty, what, uh, what's caught your eye on Punchline this week? Um, the sale of Debenhams. Well, I don't know if we all want to talk about that, really. Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Major thing that's going on. So what do you think? What was, was that? I mean, it took everyone by surprise, didn't it? It was, a, it was a real shocker, wasn't it? Because, I mean, I'd heard on the grapevine that there were certain developers who we deal with um, who were trying to change it into flats and accommodation. Um, so it was, a, it was quite a swift move. Um, normally, a uh, university don't move that quickly, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, you know, it was, um, I think it'd be good as part of what um, Simon was saying. You know, things have got to change and we've got to look at things differently um, and we've got to adapt, you know, um, the old change or die uh, motto of um, Harvey Jones, I think it was, who said that, um, you know, we've got to create different spaces with which to work and live uh, and, and operate in. And I think this is a, a step along the right way, to be honest with you. Okay. You know, we'll open it up. But um, I don't know what the others think. Well, what do you think, Ian, being a planner? We'll have to keep it quite tight. Yeah, We're running out of time, by the way, sir. Well, I think uh, it's, it continues the theme of giving people a lot of reason. Sorry, Ian, I can't hear you, mate. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better, sorry. Okay. I mean, it continues the theme of uh, giving people another reason to come to the town centre. So um, I think that can only be a good thing, you know, coming to the town centre to learn, in this case. Um, it, it was a big lump of retail and it was never, I think it was never going to be relet as, um, as one large retail space. So no, no, it's a good thing. Okay. Uh, Simon? I think it's a tremendous fillet for, for Gloucestershire, for Gloucester City Centre, sorry, because what you're doing is you're, you're transporting a, a huge number of younger people into the city centre. So, so you're actually bringing them into the city centre. There's too much retail in most city centres and certainly in terms of Gloucestershire, there needs to be a compression in terms of how much pr provided. But you also need a significant custom base. And if you're bringing young people in, and the idea is also to try and get some living in the city centre as well, then that generates that income flow to those um, shops and restaurants in the, in the town centre. I think it's great. It's got to go alongside with um, policing 
um, public realm and an area that makes, makes the feeling is that it's a safe, comfortable environment. But I think bringing that number of students in, that and the teaching, and I, I think it's superb, it's great. Yeah, 2,000 students and, um, you know, different different types of students. They're on about medical nurses, you know, um, it could be, bring some really, dynam you know, dynam uh, younger and dynamic and a bit of a buzz to the city. I think it'd be really good. I'm just gonna quickly bring up two stories before I wrap up, uh, two others that we had on, on Punchline. That was an employee banked £140,000 from a business. She defrauded a company at £140,000. What caught my eye on this story was the fact that she did it in just 17 days, um, which we I've been following a lot of these fraud stories over a long period of time, so I've never seen so much money taken out so quickly. And that was, uh, unfortunately, that was a meagre resource going back a couple of years ago. But she's gone down for eight months for that. Uh, and very quickly, the big story that caught my eye, and I think a lot of people missed this one, was the Gloucester Railway Station development. They're going to change the, 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 the way it's going to go out, the car park in. They're going to change the front, the front of it as well. And this, to, to, to my mind, is another piece in the jigsaw. We talk about Gloucester pieces and jigsaws. You've got the Forum, you've got the uh, railway station, Debenhams. I think perhaps the future of Gloucester might be looking a bit better than we, uh, than we first feared. Anyway, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Thanks ever so much for joining us today on Punchline Business Breakfast Briefers, and hopefully we'll see you very soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks.